It's a fabric that has been around for centuries, adorning the finest garments and adding elaborate decoration to quality furnishings. It indicated social status and discernment in taste. But from the late 18th century, developments in mechanisation transformed it from a luxury item to being within reach of the everyday person. And it was this revolution that led Nottingham to become the world's centre of the lace trade. The collection of lace and lace machinery at Nottingham City Museums and Galleries is the most comprehensive anywhere in the UK and has been designated as being of national importance by Arts Council England. From over 2,300 handmade samples to the 40,000 working parts in a single lace machine, the collection has now become an inspirational resource for designers and artists. The collection is cared for by a dedicated team of professionals and is used on a daily basis. There are four complementary elements to the collection. Handmade lace, lace machinery, machine-made lace and costume and textiles, either trimmed with or made from lace. These include contemporary art objects representing the diverse uses of the material. Handmade lace production in England was established by the 17th century, but the earliest example of handmade lace in the collection is Italian, dating from 1540. Intricate patterns are the essence of the fabric, and the makers were highly skilled. Their products became amongst the most desirable and expensive craft commodities of their time. This reflects the use of lace in artworks today. The collection is rich in early and pioneering machinery and includes examples of all the most significant developments in technology. It was experiments on framework knitting machines which led to the production of the first machine-made lace. Robert Frost's lace of 1769 is the earliest surviving example. The collection represents all aspects of lace manufacture, from the large working levers lace machine to these tiny needles. Key examples of the technology developed in the following half century are held in the Industrial Museum. These include this unique collection of early bobbins and carriages, essential to the operation of the Lever's lace machine, which came from their inventor, Robert Brown. This is an 1880 Cooper's Lever's landing bar machine made in Lenton in Nottingham. This machine is 14 point, that is it had 28 bobbins to the inch and it is extremely fine lace. This machine used a landing bar which moved the bobbins in one direction and then back in the other. Today these machines are still in use in parts of France but this one is unique, it's the only 14 point still in existence. There are also examples of the machinery used to create the intricate patterns, cam wheels and jacquard cards, and materials relating to the design process. However, the most important items are the lace machines. Nottingham was the world centre for the construction of lace machines with thousands being exported. Manufacturers sometimes specialised in different parts of the mechanism, many of which are represented in the collection. The collection also includes ancillary lace machines and a working model used in a court case to prove a patent. The plaintiff, John Brown, had been challenged by John Heathcote that he'd used some of his patent in the design of his own lace machine. So in 1816, the court case used this very machine. 
The thing that had been demonstrated by Heathcote was he'd invented a machine which used very thin bobbins and carriages in two tiers so that they actually matched the width of the fabric that was going to be produced. Heathcote had invented twist net and in twist net you had four double twists and two crossovers and this created a hexagon or a circle and that was lace. He'd copied the idea from seeing lace makers in Northampton. Although machine lace copied handmade lace, it could also produce much larger sizes with all over patterns and soon the market developed for the production of curtain lace and dresses. Manufacturers were so confident in their product that they produced promotional material challenging anyone to tell the difference between traditional handmade lace and those produced on a machine. Many companies are represented in the collection by their products and a variety of interesting ephemera linked to other aspects of the industry. With nearly 100,000 pieces, the collection comprehensively illustrates the chronological development of lace design and manufacture, from the earliest surviving machine lace made in the 18th century to a contemporary dress made with lace from a local company. Designs are a key aspect of the process from development to production. The collection holds over 600 lace designs from designers such as Charles Town, and Amy Atkin, who claimed to be the first known woman lace designer, and Paul Waplington, who subsequently became a well-known artist. Inspiration for lace takes many forms. An important dress in the collection was made for and worn by the wife of Sir Lawrence Bragg, who in 1915 was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for his work on X-rays and crystal structures. The lace on this dress was based on the pattern created through Lawrence's crystallography experiments. Some contemporary lace in the collection is not in the form of costume. This design of a surgical shoulder implant also took its inspiration from lace. The lace collection at Nottingham City Museums and Galleries is a national treasure which contains fine examples from a wide range of periods and sources. With the resurgence of lace in contemporary culture and an increase in the use of lace for inspiration, the collection forms a valuable resource for artists and designers to explore. <laughs>